subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 4th of April. India's daily COVID-19 cases fall below 1,000 for the first time in 715 days. Imran Khan nominates former Chief Justice Gulzar Ahmed as Pakistan's caretaker Prime Minister. And. Sri Lankan president drops brother as finance minister amid protest over crisis. And now for all the details. India recorded less than 1000 new COVID-19 cases for the first time in 715 days even as the virus tally rose to 43 million while the active infections count fell below 13000 after a gap of 714 days. Several states, including capital New Delhi, have announced complete relaxation of the COVID-19 norms starting from April in view of the steady decline in the pandemic situation. With 913 new COVID-19 cases reported in India in the last 24 hours, the number of daily new infections on Monday fell below the 1,000 mark after 715 days. The health ministry data showed on Monday. Also, the number of active cases fell below the 13,000 mark after a gap of 714 days. With 13 deaths reported in the last 24 hours, the death toll from COVID-19 in the country stands at 521,358. A total of 1.8 billion vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. India last Friday saw an end to all virus-related containment measures. Two years after the COVID-19 outbreak pushed the South Asian nation to impose one of the strictest lockdowns in the world. Several state authorities have also lifted curbs following the decline in daily cases. However, COVID-19's new variants are spreading fast in countries like China and South Korea. India's national capital New Delhi and financial capital Mumbai have also said that wearing masks is not mandatory and there will be no fines imposed. However, public health experts have called the decision premature. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday nominated former Chief Justice Gulzar Ahmed for the office of the caretaker Prime Minister. This came a day after the Premier called for a general election and dissolved the Parliament to prevent an opposition attempt to oust him through a no-confidence vote. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has nominated Gulzar Ahmad, a former Chief Justice for the Office of the Caretaker Prime Minister after approval from his PTI's party core committee, PTI leader Fawad Chaudhary informed on Twitter on Monday. This came as the Supreme Court on Monday adjourned its hearing till Tuesday on the legality of Prime Minister Khan calling a general election after his party blocked a no-confidence vote on Sunday and he dissolved Parliament to prevent an opposition attempt to oust him through a no-confidence vote. Khan, a former cricket star, lost his majority in Parliament last week and he was widely being expected to lose the no-confidence vote. He has called the move to oust him a plot orchestrated by the United States, a claim Washington denies. Meanwhile, opposition leader Shehbaz Sharif called the blocking of the vote nothing short of high treason. The standoff has thrown the nuclear-armed nation into a full-blown constitutional crisis. The opposition has said it also wants early elections, albeit after delivering a political defeat to Khan by ousting him through a parliamentary vote. Moving on. Scores of senior Forest Department employees in Pakistan-administered Kashmir held a sit-in protest recently against unfair promotions. The protesters claimed the recent promotion of four forest guards was against the rule as it was not based on seniority come merit basis. The protesters demanded the government for an immediate solution as senior officials working for more than 35 years were not given priority. 
They claim 50% quota reserved for the promotion of senior employees from the region has been violated. Locals and government workers in the illegally occupied region have to often hit the streets to demand even their basic rights. ये गैर कानूनी तरीके से इन्होंने सीरियल नंबर 16 से सनियाटी में सीरियल नंबर 16, 32, 66 और 88 नंबर से बंदे उठा के इन्होंने जो है प्रमोट कर दिए हैं जिसकी वजह से के यानी सीरियल नंबर सनियाटी में एक दो तीन और चार उन लोगों का हक में असर हुआ है वो लोग जिनकी सर्वस इस वक्त 35 साल से जायद सर्वस के आमल हैं वो लोग Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa dropped his brother as finance minister on Monday after calling for a unity government as protests against an economic crisis persisted and cracks emerged in the ruling coalition. The development came as the island nation is struggling to pay for imports of fuel and other goods due to a foreign exchange crisis. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in a statement on Monday called on for a unity government, urging all political parties to come together to accept ministerial portfolios to deal with the country's economic crisis after cabinet ministers and the central bank governor offered to resign. The development came after Rajapaksa declared a state of emergency on Friday, following protests over the economic hardship faced by the people of the country. Spontaneous street protests continued over the weekend despite a curfew. The debt-laden country is struggling to pay for imports of fuel and other goods due to a foreign exchange crisis, leading to hours-long power cuts and a shortage of essentials. In the latest, the president on Monday appointed Ali Sabri as the country's new finance minister and G L Perez as foreign minister. Leader of opposition Sajid Premadasa in an interview to news agency A N I said. We don't want a game of musical chairs where politicians exchange their positions. The whole country is calling for wholesale change, not tinkering with the existing system. So what we ask for is for path-breaking wholesale change that brings about relief to the country, not relief to politicians, not a game of musical chairs. where politicians uh, exchange their positions Premadasa also asked neighboring India to help Sri Lanka to the maximum extent amid the crisis the island nation of 22 million off India's southern tip is also grappling with soaring inflation after the government steeply devalued its currency last month ahead of talks with the international monetary fund for a loan program In news from Afghanistan The Taliban supreme leader has banned the cultivation of narcotics in Afghanistan, the world's biggest opium producer, according to an order released on Sunday as the Islamist group tries to assuage international concerns regarding drug control in the impoverished South Asian country. The Taliban supreme leader Habibullah Akhundzada on Sunday banned in a decree the cultivation of opium poppy and trade of opium in Afghanistan the Taliban led caretaker government confirmed at a press conference held by the Ministry of Interior in Kabul on Sunday Zabiullah Mujahid Taliban spokesperson said that as per the decree the production use or transportation of other narcotics was also banned Drug control has been one major demand of the international community of the Islamist group which took over the country in August and is seeking formal international recognition in order to wind back sanctions that are severely hampering banking business and development. Farmani ali qadr amir mu'minin hafizahullah dar mawrid mamnuiyat kishti kuknar wa har guna mawad nishawar. Ba asas farmani ali qadr amir mu'minin با تمام هموطنان خبر داده می شود که از تاریخ صدور این فرمان کشت کوکنار در تمام کشور به گونه مطلق منع می باشد پس از این هیچ کس نمی تواند این بوته را کشت نماید اگر خدای نخواسته کسی تخلف کرد کشت کشت او از بین برده می شود و با متخلفین از روی شریعت اسلامی برخورد صورت می گیرد The Taliban banned poppy growing towards the end of their last rule in 2000 as they sought international legitimacy but faced a popular backlash 
and later mostly changed their stance, according to experts. Afghanistan's opium production, which the UN estimated was worth 1.4 billion US dollars at its height in 2017, has increased in recent months, reports suggest. As the country's dire economic situation prompted residents of southeastern provinces to grow the illicit crop that could bring them faster and higher returns than legal crops such as wheat. Moving on, India and Nepal signed key defense and infrastructure related deals after Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Udyoba's meeting with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi in New Delhi over the past weekend. Both the leaders exchanged agreements for technical cooperation in railway sector, supply of petroleum products and remotely inaugurated an electricity transmission line and a cross-border rail link. Nepal also handed over International Solar Alliance Framework Agreement to India. Both countries also agreed to speed up the Pancheshwar hydroelectric project on the border in West Nepal, which Modi said would be a game-changer for the development of the region. Dioba concluded his trip with a visit to holy city of Varanasi on Sunday. The three-day visit was crucial to bolster ties and was the first after Dioba assumed office last July. Muslims all around the world are celebrating the Islamic holy month of Ramadan, during which they will fast from dawn to dusk and engage in special prayers. In Bangladesh, markets were busy with shoppers buying foodstuffs for iftar the meal eaten by Muslims to break the fast. Bangladeshi Muslims packed the Chalk Bazaar Iftar market in Dhaka on Sunday to buy food specialities to break their fast during the holy fasting month of Ramadan. Sunday marked the first day of Ramadan in Bangladesh. Ramadan or Ramzan honors the revelation of the Holy Quran to Prophet Muhammad and has traditionally been a time of religious abstinence. The month of fasting is also a month of feasting, with families and friends gathering at sunset for iftar, the meal eaten by Muslims to break the fast. The makeshift market was busy with shoppers buying foodstuffs. <laughs> At the central mosque, volunteers were seen preparing food for the iftar meals. Committee member Muhammad said this will continue for all 30 days of this Ramadan month. In Afghanistan, Afghans broke their Ramadan fast on Saturday, marking the Muslim holy month, the first since the Taliban seized power last year. The war torn country's economy collapsed last year and thousands fled after US and other foreign forces withdrew and the Islamist Taliban took over the country. The economic situation is dire with roughly 23 million people experiencing acute hunger and 95% of the population not eating enough food, according to the United Nations. In a bid to promote and encourage the youth to participate in water sports, the first ever kayaking and canoeing marathon was held on the Jhelum River in India's Jammu and Kashmir over the past weekend. The initiative also aimed to help youngsters to take sports professionally and to help them stay away from drugs. In a bid to promote water sports in India's Jammu and Kashmir, the local sports council organized a kayaking and canoeing marathon in Srinagar city over the past weekend. Around 30 athletes who took part were seen rowing with full enthusiasm along the famous Jhelum River. The race began from Zero Bridge to Habakadal Bridge on the Jhelum. The event also aimed to involve more youths towards sporting activities to keep them away from drugs. Because I say that sports is a mission for sports. In that media, parents, schools, 
सोसाइटी एज अ होल हम सबको हाथ मिला के एक साथ आके एकजुट होके अपने बच्चों को ड्रग्स जैसी बाबा से दूर रखना है गेम हमारा जो आगे एक्सपोर्ट हो रहा है बूस्ट मिल रहा है प्लेयरों को जो हमारे साथ अभी यंगस्टर प्लेयर्स भी है उनको भी बूस्ट हो रहा है तो हम पहली बार ये रिवर जहली में ये कॉम्पिटिशन कर रहे हैं Usually kayaking and canoeing events are held in the famous Dal Lake. It was the first time such an event was held on River Jhelum. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.